The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. As our world continues to struggle with isolation, depression, chaos, and fear, the mission, media, and message of grace from Ronnie Phillips Ministries International continues. Now more than ever, it's important that we use every method we can to bring a message of hope and grace to our world and to help those in need. You can help Pastor Ronnie Phillips deliver hope and help by becoming a monthly partner with RPMI or giving a one-time gift. Even a dollar a day makes a big difference in our worldwide and local outreach. Won't you consider joining with Pastor Ronnie today? Visit RonniePhillips.org to become a partner or make a donation. Greetings, partners and friends. This is Pastor Ronnie Phillips, lead pastor of Abbas House in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. So glad to be with you today. And today you're going to hear a message from my heart. This was from my partners conference. And I decided to draw a line in the sand. I wanted people to know who I am, who God's called me to be, what the Word of God says. And I walked them through the epistle to the Galatian church. This is going to mess with your mind. I want to talk to you about how to hit the mark. In religion, we can get so caught up with rules and regulation and denomination that we forget what's truly important in the kingdom of God. Today, I want to tell you how to hit the mark. Watch this. Most people, good people, Christian people, live their entire lives in a prison not knowing the freedom that's available for them in Christ Jesus. I lived many years like that. And let me explain what I mean. I came back to the Lord in 2005 in a very dramatic and almost traumatic way. Uh, God really just chased me into a bar and would not leave me alone until I repented and got my life right. It was a radical conversion. But leading up to that, there were many moments where God was trying to speak to me, trying to pull me out of the mess I was in, the wrong thinking that I was in couple. One, he sent this crazy cross-carrying guy to my house to build a deck. And the guy's crazy as all get out, but God used him to convict me of my mess. The other was a couple of years before my conversion and, and before I laid everything at the feet of Jesus and decided to follow his call. My father, I believe, sent Pastor Ken to try to reach me because my father was really bad about that. How many of you have a parent or a grandparent like that? They, they try to fix it for you and end up screwing it up worse than it was before by trying to fix it. So my father always would try to do that and things would get uh, worse when he would try to fix it. But he was, he was doing it from a sincere place in his heart. He, he loved me and he, and, he, and he knew, I think, what I was called to do and he wanted, wanted to help aid that. Um, so he sent Ken to visit me at my place of employment. I had a corporate job downtown that I worked at seven years. And so I didn't know who this Ken Hartley guy was. He looked extremely Baptist to me, which was a turnoff uh, at the very beginning. Um, and so I, I had a lunch appointment with him on a Friday. And so I was, listen, this, this was how distorted my mind was back then before I was living for the Lord. My whole plan on my lunch break at work was to order beers until it made him uncomfortable. This is a true story. Well, it didn't make him uncomfortable. I was trying to get this guy to judge me and leave me alone because that's the way people who are not being led by the Spirit, who are being led by the flesh and who have Wounds that haven't been healed yet. That's the way we act. We push people away that God may be sending us. And so we went through that process and we started a relationship. And I wasn't on staff. And at the time, there, there was nothing I could do for him. Nothing. Um, and very little he could do for me. But we did start to build a friendship. A couple of years later, when I came back to the Lord, that friendship 
kind of went to another level. And although I had surrendered to the ministry, I, I didn't really understand whether that meant to be a pastor or just a good insurance guy that loved Jesus and was faithful to his church. I, when I came back to the Lord, I knew I was called to ministry, but I was so miserable, I really didn't care what it was he had me do. I just didn't want to feel like that anymore. Anybody with me? I just didn't want to feel like that anymore. And so at first, I was trying to work all of this out. And I told Pastor Ken, I said, look, man, I said, I cannot do this. Like, I do not fit this religious mold. I, I don't act like this preacher or that preacher. I, I, don't, I, I love Jesus and I love sinners and I love serving, but I, I can't fit this. And many of you maybe watching or in here maybe feel the same way. Like you love Jesus, but you're like, I, I can't do that. I can't be faithful to my church. I can't be faithful to my family. I can't, can't serve God because I just, I just don't fit that. So that's where I was early on in around 2004, 2005. And he gave me a book called Grace Walk by Steve McVeigh. It's a book I've given to probably, I don't know, 100 people in the last 15 years. It's not a, a very deep book, but basically what the book reveals to the believer is that yes, you can do it. And the reason you don't think you can is because the bullseye, the mark you were trying to hit is not the mark God wants you to hit. And I wanna to talk to you tonight about hitting the mark because it's not so much that you are a failure or that you can't do this. It's that your goal and what you're focused on is not even remotely what God has for you. And you're trying to hit a target that has nothing to do with your destiny, the Bible, or even the anointing God has placed on your life. You have a narrow-minded view of what God expects of you, and you miss the kingdom for trying to hit a bullseye that God never intended for you to hit. I want to talk to you about your identity in Christ, who God's called you to be, and the freedom that is available for all Christians. Freedom. What controls your mind controls your life. What controls your mind controls your life. So if you have a false sense of identity, or if you don't understand what the gospel really means and the freedom that's available to you, you're going to feel like a failure your entire life trying to focus in and, and hone in on something that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God and what he has for you. Yes, sir. If you're in that mindset, you are missing the kingdom, but, but worse than that, you're going to continue this cycle of failure in the Christian life because your focus is wrong. Philippians, it says, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Just because you're a spirit-filled person and because you love God doesn't mean you have to leave your brain at the door. Let this mind be in you that is, was in Christ Jesus. Colossians, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So perhaps your focus shouldn't even be here, it should be there. Yes, sir. But I spent 23 years trying to be a, this idea I had in my mind of what a Christian is and what a man of God is, and it's not even what Jesus has called us to. It's a myth. And it's what the enemy uses to keep you hidden, ashamed, defeated and rejected. So you have to purge your mind and cleanse your mind of every piece of religious indoctrination that has ever been spoken over you or brainwashed into you if you're going to experience the kingdom of God. I'm talking about a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I'm talking about a king with his own government and his own ambassadors that has nothing to do with this current political system in this sin-cursed world. I'm talking about a kingdom that cannot be shaken. 
Have you ever tried so hard to accomplish something that you came up short to later find out the reason that you failed at it is because you didn't follow instructions? <laughs> Kelly and I were trying to put some chairs together, which if anyone knows me, you know I will pay extra if you will put it together because I hate putting things together. When you're raised by a preacher and a teacher, you don't know how to work with your hands. So you better have buddies that won't rip you off that know how to work with theirs. So I have friends that can fix things, that make sure I don't get ripped off. But I have messed up entertainment centers, chairs. I have made a mess trying to put things together. And many times it's because I didn't follow instructions. My focus was wrong. I was focusing on something that did not bring me freedom. The bullseye is the best shot on the dartboard. It can be hit consistently only by the best dart throwers. It's what a bullseye is. Other parts of the board are important, but you'll never be competitive in darts till you learn how to hit that bullseye. You must be able to find it. In the Christian life, you have to find your bullseye. And many times, what we think is our bullseye, what we think is our goal, our end game, is not what God really has for us. And if you don't know who you are in Christ, what God's called you to do, who he's called you to be, you're going to keep circling the mountain. The center of the target of the bullseye came from the practice of English archers who would actually practice by shooting a bull in the eye. That's where it came from. I thought that was interesting. In some archery teams, it was referred to as gold, finding gold. And I like that for the kingdom walk because each one of us has gold on the inside of us, kingdom purpose on the inside of us. And our job is to cultivate what's on the inside of us and follow after what God would have us to follow after. So we have to understand what the target is. In the book of Galatians, we learn about freedom. We learn about the doctrine of freedom. You see, some of us have been taught that the bullseye is perfection. That was my problem. I thought that once you got saved, you had to be perfect. And if I made one mistake as a youngster or I, I fell one time, I would want to quit because I was so frustrated that I couldn't be this false, fake image that doesn't really exist anyways. Perfection. Or maybe it's imitation. Another thing we do in the kingdom is we find some preacher or some Christian or, or even a family member that we think has it all together. And we try to imitate them. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery, but in the kingdom of God, it'll cause you to fall on your face. Because God created you to be an original. God created you and formed you in your mother's womb to be an original, not a carbon copy of somebody else. Yes, people can mentor you, speak into your life, and push you towards your destiny. But friend, you cannot copycat everybody else. Also, behavior. That's the bullseye, especially for people raised Baptists. We think we have to have this certain kind of behavior. And what really happens is we, we learn how to hide our weaknesses and excel in our strengths. We learn how to walk the walk, talk the talk, play the Christian games, and we just learn how to go through the motions and hide the fact that occasionally our flesh wins. I just choose to be real when I preach. I just choose to pastor in a real way. I choose to be honest. And I think that God's people need that. I think you need that. And I think the moment where we can grasp this freedom that we have in Christ is the moment we'll see revival. Hitting the mark is achieving the best result. Freedom in Christ to me is the mark. So how do we get there? The, we've heard of the Magna Carta, which was a document, Magna Carta, that gave certain rights to the English people. King John of England agreed to it on June 15th, 1215. The Magna Carta stated that the king must follow the law. He could not simply rule as he wished. It was also called the Great Charter of Freedoms. In America, we have the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. 
Also, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, as the nation approached its third year of a bloody civil war. This proclamation declared that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are henceforward shall be free. Well, in the New Testament, there's also a charter of freedoms. It is Paul's letter to the Galatians, mostly to the churches in southern Galatia, right in the center of Asia Minor where I visited. Paul wrote this letter after his first and third missionary journey there. You can read about it in Acts 13 and 14. But this epistle will set you free if you dive into it and understand what God is calling you to. You'll be able to hit the mark, my friend. Hit your bullseye. Fulfill your purpose once you understand the freedom that you have in Christ. If you can receive the truth of God, you will live in the zone. You'll hit the bullseye. You'll find gold and you'll experience true freedom. There was so much error going on in these churches. They were arguing Jews and Gentiles and Greeks over works versus grace. And Paul had to set the record straight. They were arguing over circumcision, but it was more than circumcision. It was the fact that you still had to earn grace, you still had to earn your love from God, that what Jesus did was not enough. Let me say this, 2,000 plus years later, we're still having the same battle in the kingdom of God. We're still trying to say his blood plus this, his grace plus this. And let me say this, for it is by grace you've been saved not of works, lest any man should boast. I don't care how spiritual you are, how good you are, you don't earn this. It was a gift paid for by my father's son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It was paid for on a bloody cross. It was paid for, promised and prophesied, and it can only be experienced by faith. Saved by faith, not by works. Everybody say, not works. What are some requirements we today try to put on the grace life? Well, church membership and five steps to this and you got to talk this way and you got to look this way and you got to uphold a denominational rules and regulations and you got to sound this way or look this way. Ooh, y'all don't even know I'm in my bullseye tonight. I'm in my zone. Y'all are in for it. But here's the deal. All of that nonsense has led us to where? Nowhere. Country's still in a mess. People still fighting. Racism still exists. Churches are dying in our own denomination. Hatred's at an all-time high. We need authentic revival from the Holy Spirit. And we've got to get back to the core message, which is Jesus plus nothing. Jesus plus nothing. He's enough. He's enough. The people Paul was writing to, they were emotional people. They were overly emotional. They were impulsive. They were argumentative. They were loud. They were boastful. They were immoral. They could go from worshiping God to stoning someone of God within the same week. It reminds me of the culture here in the United States. We go from wanting to worship God to stoning a brother or sister within the same week. We need to repent. We need to repent. Galatians chapter one is about grace. Chapter two is about the hypocrisy of religion when the apostle Paul would confront Peter for being a hypocrite. Say, you act one way around us Gentiles, but you get around your Jewish people and you act a different way. That's right, that's right. The hypocrisy of religion. Third chapter is about putting on Christ. Not putting on flesh, not putting on religion, but putting on Christ. Maybe somebody's called you a put on. You're just a put on. You're a hypocrite. No, I'm put on Christ. And when he's on me, the anointing's on me. Amen? And I can't lose. It's about Abraham's seed. If you're saved and if you accept the grace of Jesus Christ, you are an heir to the promise. You are a seed of Abraham. You are grafted in to our Jewish brothers and sisters. 
That means everything God promised Abraham, you can have it. Amen? You can walk in divine favor because of the blood of Jesus Christ, not your own works. And four, it talks about love that fulfills the law. You can quote the law, you can flip your nose up about the law, but the only thing that fulfills it, according to Galatians 4, is love, an everlasting love, love that comes from heaven, love that serves, love that bleeds, love that dies. Oh, but here in chapter 5, and that's where I want to land right here, that's the target, that's the freedom, that's the bullseye. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Somebody say, I'm free. I'm free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. In other words, if you add to this gospel, it will profit you nothing. If you try to work your own salvation out with dead works, it will profit you nothing. If you try to add to this message, it will profit you nothing. If you choose religion over relationship, it will profit you nothing. If you try to climb some imaginary ladder going for a bullseye that doesn't exist, it will profit you nothing. I see it all the time. Even in pastors are some of the most insecure people you've ever met in your life. The reason I'm not is because I failed so miserably early on, every day's a gift. I, have, I mean, I, I get invited. I've been invited to all these things that people break their arm to go to within the last four months. I'm talking the White House, everything. My son's got a game. I got people who would pick up on short notice to go do this stuff because they feel like somehow if I can get around these famous people or I can get around these preachers or if I, if I can give them a big enough offer and they'll love me. They're chasing the wrong bullseye. They're chasing the wrong pot of gold because Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough to get you up in the morning. Jesus will promote you. Jesus will heal you. Jesus will save you. If God's anointing is on your life and his destiny is where you were headed, you can't lose. No weapon formed against you can prosper. No insecure, orphan, spirit-minded, religious person can stop you. God's got a plan. And his plans don't fail. His plans don't fail. Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. In other words, let's talk about it for a minute. If we're going to go with the law, What the word of God says, if you translate it, if you're gonna thump your nose about the law, the old covenant, that's good. That's the word of God. I'm not minimizing any part of the word of God, but what he's saying here is if you're gonna go that route, you better be perfect in keeping the whole thing. If you are gonna judge somebody who can't keep it, you, my friend, better be able to keep it all. I'm talking about no shrimp, apostle. I'm talking about all of it. If you're going to go that route, you better be able to keep all of it. I choose grace. My goodness. It says you have become estranged from Christ. You have lost your way. Your focus is so out of balance. Your target is so off. You've become disconnected from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. This doesn't mean lose your salvation, people. This means you have fallen from your purpose. You've missed your target. You aren't in a place to receive the favor and the blessing that God has for you. You have to find the zone. Find your purpose, and it is Jesus Christ. For we through the Spirit, eagerly await for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. That and the fruit of the Spirit has become the bullseye for me. That's how I measure relationships. Do you have faith working through love? Do you manifest the fruit of the Spirit? Not how loud do you speak in tongues. Some of the meanest people I've ever met can speak in tongues. 
some of the shadiest people I've ever met speak in tongues. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not looking, I don't believe that's an evidence. I believe the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence. Did the Holy Ghost that filled you up and gave you that language, did it change your life and your character? Are you a soul winner? Oh, I'm telling you, we serve a God that is in the restoration business. When you restore something, you make it better than brand new. How can it be better than brand new? Well, you've learned from your mistakes. You've made it better than it ever was. You know, when God recreates you, you become better than you used to be. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You know, we need to restore Christians that have fallen into sin. We need to restore people that have made mistakes. We need to be about grace in the kingdom of God. That's who I am. That's who this church is. That's who God's called you to be. Why don't you be an agent of restoration, an agent of God's grace? I believe if you'll accept responsibility for the gospel, then when you see people, you won't see them as different or bad. You'll see them as an opportunity for you to be an agent of God's grace. Listen, we're about grace here at Abbas House, and I'm gonna walk you through the entire epistle to the Galatian church. You've gotta come back next week, set your DVR. I'm gonna summarize the entire chapter in just a few points, and you don't wanna miss next week. I wanna challenge you to partner with Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. This is from our partners conference. We have a great time. We play golf on Friday. We have revival from Sunday through Wednesday. Great worship, great speakers. You need to come hang out with us here in Chattanooga and get in this revival atmosphere of Abbas House. I promise you, it will change your life. Listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ, won't you pray this prayer with me today? Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, save me, fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory. If you prayed that prayer, why don't you go to my website, RonniePhillips.org, register that salvation decision. If you need prayer, you can email me there. You can watch our content. Go to YouTube, go to social media, follow us, and connect with this ministry. God is using it to touch the world. I'm Pastor Ronnie Phillips, and I'll see you next time. As our world continues to struggle with isolation, depression, chaos, and fear, the mission, media, and message of grace from Ronnie Phillips Ministries International continues. Now more than ever, it's important that we use every method we can to bring a message of hope and grace to our world and to help those in need. You can help Pastor Ronnie Phillips deliver hope and help by becoming a monthly partner with RPMI or giving a one-time gift. Even a dollar a day makes a big difference in our worldwide and local outreach. Won't you consider joining with Pastor Ronnie today? Visit RonniePhillips.org to become a partner or make a donation. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.